Okay, thanks Bruce for telling me no voice yet. That means I was on mute and everything I just said, I said to myself. So, oops, sorry about that guys. Let's start again. Hi, I'm Craig Phillipson and I'm the president of Permaculture Cairns. Uh, thank you for dropping by for this our, um, monthly meeting, second time online. As you can tell, I'm still getting used to it. Um, I was just giving a warm thank you to um, Peter Taylor for that wonderful um, theme music uh, that he supplied to me um, this last month to um, help um, liven up the broadcast. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, this week, uh, what we've got coming up is um, Nikki uh, Lee Miller will be talking about compost at her place. And then I will be talking about other things, uh, other methods of breaking down uh, organic material in your garden. So uh, stay tuned to that. First of all, I just want to go through a, a couple of announcements. I uh, don't have many, so um, uh, bear with me. Um, first of all, I just want to show you um, Retro Suburbia. Uh, we did buy a, a few of these books. Um, so we could buy them in bulk. So uh, we've got a few left. Um, most have been handed out, but there are still a few left. So if you do want a copy of Retro Suburbia, I think uh, we're selling them for around $60. Um, so just uh, message me and let me know that you're interested. Um, you can either message me or um, uh, email um, info at permaculture. Um, dot, uh, sorry, info info at permaculturecans.org.au um, and uh, let me know that you want a copy. Um, also, uh, there's not much going on. As you know, everyone's locked inside. Um, I would like to um, let you know that um, CAFNEC have um, some things going on. So, um, uh, CAFNEC are doing uh, weekly uh, uh, webina webinars. So if you do want to um, uh, check out their webinars, go to their website. Um, there's their website there, um, and uh, you'll find out what they're doing. Uh, they do their monthly meetups. Um, they're doing it online now. They're doing it the last Thursday of every month. So that's a great way to sit down with your champers or your wine and uh, talk to people. Um, I was lucky enough to go along to one of their meetings um, at the start of the year before lockdown and uh, met a lovely bunch of people. So um, yeah, they're doing a great job of um, keeping people connected online. Um, so do check them out. Uh, also, you can go to our web page and uh, become a member of Permaculture Cairns. Um, membership is only $20 a year and with that membership money we can uh, help do uh, things like this. Even though we are going online now, uh, it still costs money uh, so um, that uh, $20 membership goes a long way into um, uh, putting more of these out. So um, you can go to our, our website and there's a membership form that you can fill in and the account details that you can um, deposit the $20 into. Um, uh, also, last announcement. Um, to make these the things possible, I do need um, your help as well. The more participation I have, the better um, to give us content. And what we want is content of things that um, we're doing in cans. We want to see what people are doing in their kitchens or in their backyards in the Cairns area. So if you have something that you can show, if you can make a video, it can go for 30 seconds, it can go for 10 minutes. If you can send a slideshow um, or a PowerPoint presentation, anything you can do to show what you're doing in your yard will be much appreciated because it's all about sharing with people in Cairns and the surrounding area what we're doing in our own backyards. Um, it's easy to find other information on permaculture online, but finding local information is very difficult. So we want to share in your successes and your failures so we can all learn um, as we go on this permaculture journey together. So um, 
yes, get in touch, message or um, any other way, email, and uh, let us know um, uh, what you can do to contribute to this space. Now, uh, I have um, Nikki's presentation on compost and a very uh, warm thank you to Nikki for um, doing this presentation for us. I hope you enjoy it. Um, please let me know what you think and uh, enjoy. Hi, I'm Nikki from Permaculture Cans and welcome to my garden. Today we are talking all things compost. Let's start with the basics. What is compost and why do we want it in our gardens? Composting is, at its most basic, a system for speeding up the natural rotten decay which would happen in nature. The end result of composting is compost. It's very original, I know. And it's what's left of all our kitchen scraps, our garden waste, and anything else that we throw into the composting after all the worms, the fungi, the microbes, and all the other critters which, which help in that composting process have done their work. And I know that doesn't sound particularly appealing, but plants are people and they love the stuff. people are first starting out with compost is what do I actually put into my compost? There are some things which are quite obvious, your garden waste, your kitchen scraps, your lawn clippings, they're all fairly straightforward. There are also, you know, newspapers, paper towels, coffee grounds, they're all great to go in the compost. There's no issues with those at all. Some things require a little more thought than that. Tea bags, for example, most people don't realise actually contain plastic in the bag portion of it, which means that they are not compostable. They're best go to, to put straight into the landfill bin. There are also products which market themselves as compostable, but they're not designed for use in a home compost system. They're designed to be broken down in an industrial compost system where there are introduced bacteria, the temperatures are much hotter than the 50 or 60 degrees that we manage to achieve in our home systems. So it's definitely worth checking the packaging or, or checking the product to make sure it is something that you can actually compost before you add it to your pile for the first time. Other things that tend to be a little bit controversial are things like um, meat, bones, um, dog and cat poo, and, and there are reasons for all of those. The, the main issue is that they can harbour pathogens and bacteria which don't necessarily die off in lower temperatures and in our home systems we can't guarantee that the entire pile will will reach the temperatures necessary to kill that bacteria off for a long enough period to actually have the result we want so generally out of an abundance of caution it's best to avoid putting those in your your compost unless you're absolutely certain that your temperature will meet the temperature your pile will meet the temperatures necessary to kill off the pathogens and the bacteria and the things that could make us or our families sick. I said before that composting is a system, one which we use to speed up a natural process. There are many, many ways that we can do that. There are uh, compost tumblers, there are other ones you can buy from the hardware store which are basically giant plastic tubs that you put your compost in and put the lid on and sort of leave it there. I chose to go with a DIY version because I very specifically wanted a, a three bay version and I wanted quite a large system as well because we generate quite a lot of green waste. Uh, if you have a look at my bays here you'll note that they're actually quite large. That was deliberate. In order for compost to be uh, an efficient system you need it to have a, a a minimum size of about a cubic metre and that's so that it generates enough heat to support the bacteria that need to live in that. When we're composting there, there are a couple of stages that our, our waste actually goes through. The first is the uh, mesophilic stage which is basically the normal temperature range. Bacteria that live in there are present everywhere and then as they start to do their thing they produce gas and various other things which actually heat up the compost pile and it enters what is called a thermophilic stage. Now this is sort of a, a between 50 and 60 degrees roughly 
and a whole different colony of bacteria like to live in that temperature range, much like plants from Tasmania probably aren't happy up here in North Queensland. Bacteria also have different climatic conditions which they prefer. This thermophilic or, or hot composting system is where most of the action happens. It's a much faster process to break down all the proteins and cellulose and other things which comprise the things which we put into our compost. And then once the bacteria that are living in that thermophilic environment run out of things to actually consume, it then starts to cool back down and it eventually returns back into a mesophilic stage and it continues to cool down. And then when it's all done, it's just effectively a pile of very, very fancy dirt. Another thing that comes up very often when you first start researching composting is the carbon and nitrogen ratio and, and what exactly that means for each gardener. Um, the ratio or the ideal ratio is 30 units of carbon for each unit of nitrogen, but how do we work that out? I'm not going to go and measure the nitrogen content of everything that I put into my compost. So it, it's simplified down and they say that you should try and have sort of 30 parts of, of brown material. So sticks, branches, dead leaves, wood chip, newspaper, anything like that to each, each very, very green part. So lawn clippings, for example. I'm not super phased about that because I have my three bay system. I've got plenty of time to fill up a bay, move on, fill up the next bay and so on before I actually have to come back and, and start using the compost from the first bay. Having those ideal ratios, it certainly speeds up the composting process. So if you only have one bin, for example, you might want to pay a bit more attention to that. But I know that at the end of the day, the stuff that I put in here will break down and it will be done by the time I'm ready to come back and use it. But as a general guide, try and make sure that you have more brown stuff than green stuff and try and keep it moist but not wet because bacteria and microbes and all those different things that live in the compost and do our work for us effectively, they need moisture to, to survive but they need also oxygen. So having them completely submerged in a, in a very wet, sloppy environment isn't great for their health. Now, to the actual compost process. When you think about all the things that go into actually turning the things we put in our compost into the end result which we then use in our gardens, it's incredibly complex. But the joy is we don't have to do all that work. All we need to do is build a pile of stuff, cover it, keep it kind of moist, and then in you know three to six months, depending on, on how hot it gets, you'll have beautiful broken down compost. That's, that's the, the genius of, of letting nature do the hard work for us. Now, in true TV fashion, I have prepared some compost for you earlier. This is a pile of mulch that I had delivered a few months ago. Most of it ended up on the garden, but there was a lot of mulch and only one of me, so there's a little bit left. And what happened as that, that pile of mulch sat there is that those, those microbes, those bacteria, or the worms absolutely went nuts, and they all started to break it down. And what you end up with, instead of mulch, which even here you can see has broken down a little bit, is this beautiful, light, fluffy soil, effectively. It, it breaks it down, it adds a lot of organic matter. There's hard clay beneath where this is, but this is fluffy, it's light. You can see that I can dig it with my hands, and that is absolutely full of nutrients and things that plants absolutely love. I'm Nikki from My microphone's turned itself off again. There you go. Um, I do have something to confess myself. Um, I've never actually um, made a compost heap. Me, uh, President of Permacompost.
Um, my batteries are going flat. Uh, technical difficulties just to make life interesting hey uh, batteries are gone flat on the microphone um, just had to change them out luckily I had a spare set available uh, so <laughs> yep yeah, all the messages are saying no sound again sorry guys uh, do a, I do apologize for it um, but uh, let's go straight into I'll show you a few more ways uh, that you can break down material Okay, so first of all um, is the zone five of the garden. That's the wild area, the area that you don't touch, the area that takes care of itself. Uh, zone five um, in nature is the forest, um, the grazing lands that no one goes to, the animals just take care of themselves. In the backyard, right down the bottom of the yard, we have a mango tree, and underneath the mango tree, we take no care of the plants whatsoever. And uh, as you can see, there is no actual um, ground showing. It's covered with sticks and leaves and other brick and brack and everything. Uh, and that's all slowly breaking down and uh, becoming part of the soil and we take no care of it whatsoever and uh, we get no weeds showing up because it's got plenty of shade and um, and the mulch leaves are covering the ground so um, nothing uh, can pop up so that's um, pretty much what we want to emulate in all our other systems so let's let's have a look at some of the ways that we can do that First of all, I've got chop and drop. This is nice and simple. Just um, cut things down and drop them on the ground. Simple as that. Here I'm trimming away um, uh, growth to um, make more room for um, my citrus tree behind there. And it's just a matter of cutting everything into small people and dropping it straight on the ground and letting that become the mulch um, to uh, fertilize the ground as well. And because it's nice and fresh, it's got the nitrogen com component as well as um, the carbon component in it. And you just leave that on the ground that stops weeds from coming up and it breaks down and provides that nutrient back to the soil. And uh, also the, uh, provides more sunlight for the um, citrus tree and it's going to enjoy that. So um, that's one easy method to add organic material to your um, to your garden. Next, I've got weeds. Now, weeds are a great way to make organic material uh, in your garden. They grow so easily. Love weeds, and I know how to grow them. This is my patch of Singapore daisy. Now, I don't recommend that you plant Singapore daisy um, purposely, um, but it just comes along. A wonderful thing about Singapore daisy is it's very easy to rip off because it grows along the top of the ground with uh, very weak um, roots. So it very easily pulls up and um, you can easily uncover a large area of soil very quickly. And you see the soil there um, is nice and black because it's been shaded by um, the Singapore daisy. And as the Singapore daisy grows and dies, it's been adding uh, uh, to that soil. Now, ripping it up does um, two things. It gets rid of it, but it also um, does not get rid of the roots. And the roots without the top of the plant um, actually release nutrients back into the soil. And roots also help break up the soil and provide channels for other microbes and uh, worms and things to get around. So growing weeds is not a bad thing. But there's more. I can show you what to do with those weeds. 
These are my um, tubs for um, making a weed tea. Uh, what I do is I throw um, all those weeds that I collected into the tub and fill it up with water. Sorry, I'm just trying to load the next uh, slide here and um, it doesn't want to play the game. Nope, it's not playing for me. Okay, I'll go to the next one. All right, so this is showing um, uh, the weeds after about six weeks. This is what they look like. Now to hold them down, they've got um, uh, bricks on top of them in there. But you'll see that um, while they've sunk right down, even though they started all the way at the top, it's just growing um, this um, mold on top, which um, I'll stir in. And that's quite a nutrient uh, a mix of water and everything else um, that I can then apply to the garden. Now, because those weeds have been in there for six weeks, they can be thrown onto the garden as well. They're as good as dead. Um, and so they won't grow anymore, so they can also go onto the garden. And when the weeds go on the garden, I just fill the um, bin up with um, more water and uh, then use that to water the plants. So nice and simple technique. And then uh, just sprinkle that on the water and the plants will love it. So that's a great way of getting your weeds to do the work for you to um, bring nutrients to the garden. Another way of um, bringing nutrients to the garden is a banana circle. Now, a banana circle is a big pit that um, you put uh, bananas around and other plants here. I've got pineapples and, and Brazil spinach and an avocado tree. And um, in the middle there, I've got um, just all rough um, chopped up wood, leaves, broken branches, all going in the middle there. And that all breaks down. When it rains, the water um, fills up the pit and the water and the rain all break that down. Now, if I was smart, what I could do to make that break down further is, bro is throw um, lawn clippings on top of it. And lawn clippings um, being the nitrogen that um, Nikki was talking about, uh, act like um, water to the Wicked Witch of the West. It just melts the heap right down very quickly. Um, it's amazing how quickly it disappears when you throw grass on top of it. Uh, here I don't have any grass to throw on top of it, but um, it breaks down. We live in the tropics. It breaks down very quickly in the tropics. Now, another way of breaking things down is uh, chooks. Uh, chooks are great at scratching things up and uh, breaking things down. They do a great job in my yard. Um, it's one of their many jobs. I've even got the neighbour, I've lowered the fence so the neighbour can throw their grass um, over for the chooks to dig through. Now the chooks um, will leave that a few days while uh, other bugs and things get into it. Then they'll scratch through it and spread it everywhere. I give them food scraps as well and I throw leaves. And because they're under the mango tree anyway, they get plenty of leaves in there. So they get plenty of carbon going into the chook area. And uh, they break all that down um, uh, beautifully for me. And when they do that, then I come along and when I want to pot a plant or um, uh, fill up some more uh, garden beds with soil, I come and grab the soil from here. And it's nice and easy to dig through because uh, the soil that is in here has all been put here by, by the chooks and it's nice and loose and um, full of good things. When you dig down far enough, you do find worms, but um, you can take that, that up and uh, start growing plants in it. Now, it's not like compost, uh, where compost um, kills all the seeds. There's still plenty of li live seeds in here, so it still gets weeds coming through, but it's um, a great way to um, uh, 
create nutrient dense soil. Now also in the Chook area I have my soldier fly farm. It's meant to be a worm farm but I found I was never good with worms um, but I'll, I'm really good with soldier flies because you don't have to take any care of them whatsoever and doesn't matter what you throw in there and they provide nice lovely juice just like worms do that I can use um, on my garden later and there are the soldier fly larvae eating away all that organic material so I throw things in here that the chooks um, shouldn't eat or, I, or won't eat and um, if this gets too smelly, um, it's easy to just throw some um, leaves in there to provide that card and get rid of that smell. And it all breaks down. We also get cockroaches growing in there. And because it's in the chook area, the chooks love it. All those soldier fly, they need to go into the ground um, to um, go to their next stage of life. And they climb out of there and uh, go into the ground and the chooks just dig them up and eat them so it's really good food source for the chooks and the cockroaches the chooks love too so they love having a worm farm there and I take the juice and just put a little bit you don't need much because it is a super concentrate and then fill that up with um, water and sprinkle that on the plants and again, just like the weed tea, the plants just love it. They, they love having um, that water on them uh, with the nutrients in it. And take it up to the pot plants up top as well. That uh, Because they're not in the soil, they don't get the same uh, fungal networks or anything that are in the garden beds below. So they really love this extra nutrient. Now, the chooks also provide me with um, straw mulch, uh, which I get uh, from their um, coop. Uh, it's much better than putting the straw straight on the garden beds uh, because it's got the poo in it. And I've also got a guinea pig that does that job as well. The guinea pig also um, eats my weeds for me, so um, I do grow weeds specially for the guinea pig to eat, and it provides nutrients in that soil. Um, which um, I can then put on the garden. Now when the soil goes, uh, when the uh, straw goes onto the garden, uh, it provides nutrients to it. And this garden bed started out fully clay. Then I put a lot of wood chips on it and uh, and just keep um, topping it up with straw now you see it's still clay but it's a nice dark rich clay as I dig further you will see that um, uh, you still get a few gray patches in there but you can still you can see the worms there right at the top I'm um, just loving that organic material and, and digging through it all and they're taking that all back down into the clay and slowly stirring it up and making it a really nice dark rich soil so you see the the more gray clay down there a bit deeper I also have um, wood chips breaking down now in uh, the southern uh, states, uh, wood chips take a long time to break down. With When we're in the warm tropics, they don't take long to break down at all. So I've got about a foot of um, wood chips here, and that actually started off as a warm compost because they were so deep that they, they were generating their own heat. Uh, but now it's um, gone, as uh, Nikki said, into that mesophilic stage where it's a cool compost and just breaks down. That gets a lot of fungi in there as well, which is really good um, for helping uh, to transfer those nutrients around to the plants. And the reason why I've got so much um, uh, wood chips there is because my um, yard started off sloping down towards the house. I've built a retaining wall. I've I've filled that retaining wall with clay to make a dam and then filled wood chips on top of it. And the wood chips uh, create a drainage so that uh, the water runs along the um, retaining wall to the side of the house and then down into a gutter and, and away. And so it gets plenty of drainage in there and uh, 
the wood chips are breaking down nicely and you see here that I even have um, nice big worms in here already and that's only been there um, since the start of the year really so the worms are absolutely loving that and they're not composting worms they're earthworms which are a lot bigger um, and and they love um, being in, in that wood chip so they're really enjoying that um, but being organic material that will break down and I will have to keep putting more and more on in the wet tropics um, you do have to keep applying um, organic material as it um, disappears very quickly and, and runs off and the nutrients um, uh, run out of the soil with all the rain as well so um, you've got to keep applying organic material something on top now the last thing and that I uh, want to show you is a simple worm tower a very easy it's way just to, a PVC um, pipe um, um, with slits from put kitchen. in it and you um, bury that in the ground small, um, wicking and then you take your kitchen waste and, and you uh, come put to it and clean up the all kitchen the waste in it uh, this is a worm then you tower. Put a paver a or a lid on so top of it can go in to the, uh, stop rats in getting the sides. in there and eating all the compost. You fill it up with food, and, um, put a paver or something on top. And the worms uh, find their way and, in uh, through those slits and uh, eat all that organic way material. To, um, and then they go out again from and transfer that to the um, rest of your garden. So if you've got a small garden and the worms will come don't know what to do with your kitchen waste. This is the perfect this thing. This is a worm tower. And, uh, I've Cut had one the of these in the ground so the worms can go in just the, never filled up because the, the worms were eating it as quickly it as I was putting food, up. Put a paver or something on top. In there. And, uh, so there you go. There are a very easy way um, to, um, 10 ways that waste, you can from uh, kitchen. Um, actually can uh, small, um, break down rotting material without um, having to create a compost heap. Uh, there are other things that you can do. There's Bakashi um, buckets that you can have on your kitchen bench and plenty of other methods. So please um, let me know what um, you think. What methods um, do you have in your yard that uh, break down things? You can send a pic um, comment here and let us know what you're doing in your yard because I've just shown you um, 10 methods that I'm doing in my yard of um, 800 square meters. And that's without any effort whatsoever. So I would love to see what you're doing. Well, that's the um, end of our um, presentation. Um, again, I would like to um, thank Nikki for um, her presentation on compost. And I would encourage um, everyone else to um, uh, send some uh, videos in there as I said it can be 30 seconds long or it can be 10 minutes long we, I would love to share what other people are doing um, in Cairns and in the surrounding area um, again a big thank you to Pete Taylor for providing that um, lovely theme music that you're just about to hear again and uh, thank you all for tuning in and uh, listening to this and um, yeah we will do it again um, next month at this stage we don't know how whether we will have a meeting um, in person or um, online uh, having said that let us know if you like it let us know if we should keep going online um, even when we're back um, in the hall um, is it worth to uh, uh, use this technology so that we're in the hall and online at the same time we would love to hear your feedback so again, thank you very much for watching.